Welcome to this demonstration of cross-cloud data access and visibility for granular VCDR scenarios with Cohesity's Cloud Retrieve and Microsoft Azure. In this demo, I'm going to showcase Cohesity's ability to provide data accessibility and visibility across private and public clouds, allowing enterprise organizations to catalog and inventory externally stored data, and also how to perform granular business continuity and disaster recovery exercises with the data collected. So I'll start the demonstration by opening the Cohesity UI and kind of going over some of the tasks that have been configured here as part of the uh, demonstration. So there's obviously a bunch of different jobs that I have already scheduled. Uh, the one in particular here that you see here is a particular job that is configured to perform archiving services as well as local protection to an external cloud. So if I look at the settings, I uh, understand that this is one task which combines two different functions, local data protection, as well as long-term retention to a public cloud, in this case, Microsoft Azure. It is protecting these three particular virtual machines, which are running in a vSphere infrastructure. So now I wanna take, a, 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 take the time and sort of uh, demonstrate the actual target where I'm actually having that data or those virtual machines uh, archived onto. So this is in particular one of the many external targets that are supported for uh, from Cohesity. So here's the actual information of that one particular resource in Microsoft Azure that I'm utilizing. Again, uh, encryption is always enabled here in this particular case whenever communicating with external or even public cloud entities. But there's an ability to um, add additional security, which is always great. Right? You have the ability to uh, uh, increase that by downloading or you know uh, saving locally the actual certificates in the event that you may want to access that particular resource from a different cluster, which is the point of what we're trying to prove and validate here in the case of providing access and visibility across clouds. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm basically going to save this particular task. Uh, you can see here now that the license key becomes a downloadable item uh, because that particular capability or feature is enabled. So I can very quickly click on download and save that particular uh, key file and store it somewhere safe so that I actually won't have, uh, you know, be able to access that particular resource from another cluster, which is what I'm going to demonstrate. So now I'm going to jump on to the uh, second cluster, which is actually placed in a completely separate environment, completely separate infrastructure. In particular, this one is actually being hosted in Microsoft Azure as well. I'm going to go into the uh, Cloud Retreat feature which is going to allow me to perform the search, download, and recover the data that I'm looking for. But I wanted to demonstrate the actual procedure for configuring or setting up a cluster to do such thing. So number one, I didn't register the external archive target um, ahead of time so that I can do this as part of the demonstration. So here you can see uh, very quickly and how simple uh, this sort of wizard is where you basically provide the applicable name of the external target. Uh, you provide a description, something that is suitable and applicable to the infrastructure and how it's managed and consumed. The purpose of this particular target, obviously being compared to a, an archival or a cloud tier, here obviously we're looking to uh, configure a cloud tier. We select a type, uh, in this particular case is the Azure standard. Uh, provide a name for the container, and this is the container or the repository where data is currently being archived in Microsoft Azure. Uh, we provide the container name and uh, we'll also provide the account name that is utilized to access that particular storage resource. Now, one of the other things that are also going to be needed here is uh, in order to access information on that particular resource, obviously the information there is encrypted and is safe. So we have to provide the access key to do so. So once I copy and paste the, the access key, which I obviously omitted because no one needs to know what my access key is, you'll be able to basically add the target. Now, once the target is added, the first step into looking into the information of the system is to basically go through the process in configuring the search task. Here you can see that I'm adding the private key, which I previously uh, uh, configure and save onto a you know, secure location so that I can actually perform this. And then I attach and upload the, the key and then I begin the actual search task. Now the task as you saw there could take a long time but obviously I have here a pretty small 
a job in order to sort of make this happen a little quicker. But you can see that the job that I presented from the private cluster is now here presented. And here's one of the things you can actually see once the search is completed. So one of the two things that are possible here is the fact that you are allowed to sort of look at the actual download uh, or the jobs metadata per se and look at the type of information you want to see based on the time and date. In particular, you can inventory, you know, which time, which month, which week, which, week, which day. Uh, jobs or, 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 or data was uh, archived. But then you also have the opportunity to then download a particular or a specific snapshot from a point in time perspective that you want to use to restore that kind of in, uh, you know, the information at, at hand. So once that's selected, you basically choose the particular uh, storage domain or the abstraction which will be uh, which will be utilized to store the data that's being downloaded on the cluster and click download. Now, once the download uh, task is uh, activated and started, you'll see that this will become something that is traceable in two different uh, sort of functions. So one, you'll be able to see and identify the starting point in time, but then you'll see the jobs metadata, for example, like what I've been mentioning before, where I can actually look at the information that's relevant within that um, uh, external target that, that uh, repository and then you'll be able to trace and track the uh, status of the download of that one particular point in time snapshot that was selected uh, as the, the 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 data point or the data set to recover and download onto the cohesity cluster here obviously that takes uh, a bit of time depending on how large the data set is but here in particular uh, this happened fairly quickly as I've you know been able to sped up some of the uh, some of the time here so for the pro for the purpose of the demonstration, um, the important thing here is that you know while this may take a little bit of time, uh, understand the value of what this capability delivers to an enterprise organization. Being able to have visibility uh, into data that is archived in any location and be able to pull it down um, uh, at any point in time, depending on what's needed. So now that the job is done. I'm going to move on to the test and dev sort of environment of the Cohesity cluster and choose to clone a particular type of data. Here, specifically, I'm trying to clone and bring back a either the entire job or whatever the contents of that particular local protection job is, or I may want to do a selective sort of approach and choose a single instance of an application or a single instance of a particular share repository, right? For either unstructured data or either a virtual machine. In this case, I'm bringing up uh, a virtual machine, which will be utilized as a form of you know, evaluation to test actually that this stuff works and you're able to act effectively and successfully restore the system at any point in time. This particular section here, you basically see the uh, ability to you know, uh, fill in the blanks in terms of the resources and, and network settings that are going to be consumed in Microsoft Azure for the reinstantiation of this particular instance. At this point, once all of the necessary fields have been filled out, you'll see that the job is confirmed and it begins. You'll be able to trace or look at the status of the restoration or the cloning process of this particular virtual machine and all of its status. So very quickly, you're able to identify that progress. Now, as a final point to this particular demonstration here, what I'm going to do is not just restore the actual VM itself, but now the fact that this virtual machine has been restored, understand that the reinstantiation of this particular virtual machine happens and has been converted from the VMware's, uh, VMware VCR specific uh, format to a format which is native that will run in the Microsoft Azure cloud. And in this particular case, I'm referring to a native Hyper-V format. So the Cohesity data platform performs the conversion uh, during the process of the cloning so that you are now able to safely and effectively uh, reinstantiate or bring up that one particular application, in this case, a virtual machine. So here I'm going to take a look at the actual dashboard and see uh, the virtual machine and identify it once it's been fully restored. Uh, I'm now able to look at the actual IP address, as you can see here, 
And then I'm going to utilize that IP address to uh, initiate a remote desktop connection to then, uh, you know, prove and successfully validate the transformation of the virtual machine that everything's working. As you can see here, I'm able to successfully log in into a Windows uh, Server 2002 instance uh, where I can actually validate that my restoration of data, my, the, the transformation that took place is actually working as it should 100%. And now the uh, virtual machine itself has been fully configured. Now that's all fine and dandy, as you would imagine, but to complete the entire process, let's say this was a, just a, a scenario to, uh, to test something, to evaluate something. We provide the same ease uh, in terms of tearing down what was already built and created. As you see here, um, with a single click of a button, I'm able to tear down that one particular clone. And this could happen to numerous clones, regardless of whether it's one, two, ten, or, or many. But the same effort takes, uh, it's utilized and it takes to tear them down again and successfully clean out the consumption of resources in the public cloud. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the demo and thank you for watching.